there have been several notable updates in the world of AI video. So one of the best video generators out there, Minimax, has finally released an image to video feature. So in this video, I'm going to test this out. I'm going to test out a series of very tricky images to show you what it can and cannot do. Plus, I'll compare these results with Kling, which is another close competitor. Finally, we also have Pika 1.5, which was actually released around 10 days ago at the time of this recording, but their servers were stuck when they released it, and I couldn't actually generate anything until this week. Anyways, in today's video, I'm also going to do a full review on Pika 1.5. I'm going to compare it with the two leading video generators out there, Kling and Minimax, to show you what it can and cannot do. Let's jump right in. First of all, for Minimax, it's pretty straightforward to use. I'll link to this in the description below where you can sign up for a free account. After you have signed up, you can just enter in a prompt and then click create. Now I've already gone over their text to video feature in a previous video, so see this if you haven't already. But recently they've added this new feature which lets you upload an image as the start frame. So if you click on this, it allows you to upload an image. So first I'm going to select this image which I created with Flux. And then for this prompt section, you can either leave it empty or to give it more guidance, we are going to type in a terrified girl running away from a T-Rex. And then all you need to do is click create. All right, and here is what we got. You can see this generation is not great. So the girl is transforming into a woman and her face, her body is completely different. Plus the T-Rex's arm kind of fell off, but it regrew a new arm and then it's not really chasing the girl, it's just walking off in the distance. So not a very impressive generation. By the way, I'm going to do the same thing with Kling. So this is a close competitor. This is also one of the best video generators out there. They already have an image to video feature. So if you log in and then click on this tab, here is where you can upload an image. So again, I'm going to upload the same photo. And then for the prompt, I'm going to add in the same prompt. And then we will click generate. And this is what we get for Kling. You can see actually Kling's generation is a lot better. The T-Rex is chasing the girl. The girl remains very consistent. She doesn't turn into a woman. And then the T-Rex also remains fairly consistent across the entire video. And then here are the two side by side. I would say in this case, the clear winner is Kling. All right, next up, let's upload this meme image and see what that gives us. I'm not going to enter in any prompt for this example, so it can do whatever it wants with this image. Let's click create and see what that gives us. All right, here's what we got for Minimax. And oh my goodness, she is pissed. This guy is in big trouble. And here's what we got for Kling. What's going on here? I don't know what's going on here. Can someone explain this to me? Anyways, here are the two videos side by side. Let me know in the comments which one you think is better. All right, next up, I'm going to upload this anime image of two Kung Fu masters fighting. And now this is a tricky image because first of all, it's testing if it can generate anime. And second, it's testing if it can generate a fight scene, which not a lot of video generators can do well right now. And then for the prompt, I'm going to type in anime style of fight between two Kung Fu masters. And then let's click create. And here is what we got for Minimax. You can see it can pull off an anime style and they are kind of fighting. However, the hands and fingers just deform quite a lot. This is a clear flaw. I don't think this is a usable video. And here's what we got for Kling. This is actually pretty cool. I mean, everything remains consistent. However, they're not really fighting. I did not specify there to be fire in the prompt, but that's what it generated. It's kind of cheating here because it's not making them fight. It's just adding some fire effects to the scene. Anyways, here are both of them side by side. And again, I just want to emphasize that fight scenes are very hard and pretty much none of the top video generators can actually pull off a very coherent, consistent fight scene. All right, next up, I'm going to test out this meme. Again, I'm going to leave the prompt empty and see what it gives us. Let's click generate. And here is what we got. This is a perfect video. Everything remains very consistent. But again, this is quite an easy picture. I mean, 
The girl is just standing there looking at the camera. There's no high action movements in the video. So this should be a pretty easy generation for it to pull off. And here's what we got for Kling. And you know, this is pretty cool. It's actually rare to see this effect where first the camera focuses on the girl in the foreground and then it kind of zooms in to focus on the background. This is a very cool effect. And again, everything remains very consistent. I would have to say, I prefer Kling's generation a bit better. It's just slightly more detailed and sharper. Anyways, here are the two videos side by side. Let me know in the comments which one you prefer. All right, next up, I'm going to upload this image, which I created with Ideogram. This is an awesome AI image generator, and the prompt is just a young woman doing a live stream. So let me actually paste the prompt in here as well, and then click Generate. All right, here's what we got from Minimax. You can see at the beginning there, they actually added a pretty interesting effect where it zoomed in a bit. And you often see this zoom effect on YouTube when you have an influencer talking at the camera. So that's a pretty interesting addition. Now notice her face isn't really consistent, especially her eyelids. This doesn't look great. And then her hands and fingers are also not too good. So if you look closely, they do kind of warp into these weird deformations over time and it's just not consistent. And here is what we got from Kling. You can see Kling's generation is a bit sharper, plus her face is a bit more consistent. Her eyelids actually look consistent. Like I don't see any weird deformations on her face. So that's pretty good. Her hands and fingers, however, are still flawed. You can see these deformations over time. And then here are the two videos side by side. In this instance, I would have to give the points to Kling, but let me know what you think. All right, let's try some crazier examples. I'm going to upload this image of a Japanese woman being attacked by a zombie, which I generated on Ideogram. And then for the prompt, let's paste in a young woman with a terrified expression. She is being attacked by a zombie from behind. And let's see what this gives us. All right, here's what we got from Minimax. Oh my gosh. <laughs> She is terrified. This is quite a terrifying scene. And for the most part, I mean, everything remains kind of consistent except for her jacket there. And there still is some hallucinations on her hand. But other than that, I mean, this makes for a pretty decent scene in a horror movie. And this is why I love image to video. You can first generate an image as the start frame, and there are a ton of tools to give you a lot of control, like Flux and Stable Diffusion and Control Net, and Loras for consistent characters. So this gives you 100% control of the start frame of the video, and you can create some pretty crazy things from this. All right, and here's what we got from Kling. Oh my goodness, she's trying to like shake the zombie off her, and then the zombie just kind of disappears. You can see there's a lot more warping going on in this video. It's not as consistent as Minimax. So I don't think this generation is particularly usable. Anyways, here are the two side by side. In this case, for this high action scene, I would have to give the point to Minimax. And you know what? It's kind of fun generating videos of a young woman attacked by a zombie. So let's generate another one. I'm going to upload this image, which was also generated by Ideogram and then click create. All right, here's what we got. And this is perfect. It's hard to notice any flaws with this. And again, this can be a scene straight from a horror movie. This is so good. All right, and here's what we got from Kling. By the way, notice that I'm running Kling 1.0 here because I ran out of credits to do 1.5. Anyways, this one, it's a bit slow motion. So Kling is kind of cheating here. I mean, slow motion is pretty easy to generate. You can see overall, everything remains consistent. She doesn't look as scared as the video from Minimax though. Anyways, here are the two videos side by side. Again, for this example, I would have to give the point to Minimax. It's better at handling these types of scenes. All right, my final test, let's see if it can just get an anime character to talk. Because earlier, the example of the anime Kung Fu Masters fighting, it's very hard for it to generate a fight scene. So let's make it easier. I'm going to upload this photo of an anime girl with a really nice pair of, let's focus on the video, guys. Guys. Let's focus on the video, okay? 
So for the prompt, it's really simple. I'm just going to type in anime girl comma talking and see what that gives us. All right, so here's what I got from Minimax. You can see it's not great, especially her mouth. Her mouth looks really weird. I guess it kind of got the anime eyes correct, but still not perfect. And then her hands and fingers also warp over time. So overall, this is not a very good or usable generation. And here's what we got from Kling. Actually, Kling does this slightly better, but she's not really talking. I would like to see her, you know, open her mouth a bit more. And she's not like moving her hands around as much as Minimax. So you can't actually see her hands and fingers. In other words, Kling is kind of cheating here. It's making it easier for itself. It's not exposing any hands and fingers. It's not making her talk. So you would expect this video to be more consistent. Anyways, here are the two generations side by side. Let me know in the comments what you think. All right, so that sums up my test of Minimax's new image to video feature. You can see for some of the time, it's better than Kling. For example, for the scenes with a woman being attacked by a zombie, but for other instances, Kling handles it better. So for example, for this scene of a girl being chased by a T-Rex, Kling's generation was clearly better than Minimax. So I guess the verdict of this comparison is that there's no clear winner. And unfortunately, if you wanna generate something, it's best to try out both platforms and see which result is better. Anyways, next let's move on to Pika Labs. We have a new AI video generator in town and it's called Pika 1.5. It was actually released last week, but their servers were stuck and I couldn't actually generate anything until this week. Anyways, in today's video, I'm gonna do a full review on Pika 1.5. I'm gonna compare it with two other leading video generators out there, Kling and Minimax, so you can get a sense of what it can and cannot do. Thanks to Catalyst for sponsoring this video. Catalyst is a super powerful AI tool to generate scripts and storyboards. It makes it easy for filmmakers, advertisers, and content creators to turn scripts into vibrant storyboards in seconds. So for example, if you don't have a script, you can simply type in an idea and it would generate a script for you. So for example, let's try a love story between Jack and Jill. And you can see within seconds, it gives us a full script that looks like this, which we can turn into a storyboard. Now you can edit each one of these rows and you can also edit the prompt further. There are various settings such as the aspect ratio and also the art style. You can go for a sketch style or cinematic, cartoon, pixel art, or animation. It also generates consistent characters across your storyboard. So here you actually need to choose the face of your character. And you can see there are a ton of different options you can choose from. And you can see within seconds, it's able to generate a full storyboard with the images and with consistent characters. You can also add a new character, including your own custom character. Once you've created a new character, for example, you can say Elon enters the scene and you can see now it generates a scene with our new character of Elon. You can also upload your own image to use as a reference frame. So this gives you unparalleled customizability and you can customize the image of each card. You can change the angle, the distance, the location, and even customize the poses of all the characters. Easily save your script into various formats. Plus when you're done, you can also easily present it with this presentation mode. Join many creators already using Catalyst. Click on the link in the description below for a seven day free trial. So to access Pika, all you have to do is go to pika.art, which I'll link to in the description below. And then once you're in, you can sign up for a free account. And once you do sign up, you do get some free credits to start with. Now, Pika has actually been around for a while. This is one of the pioneers of AI video and it existed way before even Sora was announced. Now, of course, back then AI video was pretty bad. All we could really do at the time was simple zooming and panning and we couldn't really generate high action scenes like we get with current video generators. But finally, Pika has gotten an upgrade and this latest version, 1.5, they claim it has much better quality and prompt following and consistency. So I'm gonna put this to the test. I'm going to test its limits on a series of very tricky prompts. But before we do that, there's another feature they released and it's pretty fun to play with. It's called Peak Effects. 
And here's how it works. So let me just get rid of this prompt first. For PikaFX, you need to upload an image. I'm going to upload this meme. And then if we click on Pika effect, there are a few options we can choose from. We can either inflate it, melt it, explode it, squish it, crush it, or turn it into cake. So let's try, let's try inflate it and then press generate and see what happens. All right, let's try another example. I'm going to upload this image of a girl being chased by a T-Rex, and then instead of inflate it, let's explode this and see what happens. So here are some more examples. Here's a crush it example. Here's a squish it example. You can see it's kind of turning it into Play-Doh. Now, to be honest, here's the thing. I mean, these Pika effects are pretty neat, but I can't really think of any use case for this other than it's fun to play with. So at least for me, this feature seems like something I would play with for like one or two days and then never use again. But let me know in the comments what you think of this and if you actually have a use case for this. Anyways, next, let's actually test out its video generation capabilities. I'm going to test it on a series of pretty hard prompts of various styles to show you what it's good at and what are its limitations. So the first prompt is aerial drone view of an alpine mountain range at sunset. And it's pretty simple and straightforward to use. You just need to type in your prompt here and then Make sure you choose Pika 1.5, which is the updated model with the better quality, according to them. And then there's also this settings button over here, which lets you set some further options. You can also enter in a negative prompt. These are all the things you don't want to include in our video. So for example, I'm going to enter a cartoon animation 2D low quality. And then you can also set the aspect ratio. We are going to leave it at 16 to nine. So once that's done, let's click generate. All right, so here's what we got. You can see the quality isn't great. It's kind of blurry, it's not high resolution. Plus it's not really a drone video. It's a video of a drone. So I guess it's taking my prompt way too literally. I was looking for a video that's taken by a drone and it looks like the propellers of the drone aren't actually spinning. So this doesn't look too impressive. By the way, here's the same prompt with Kling and Minimax and you can see both of them just look way more detailed and more realistic compared to Pika. All right, next one I'm going to try is an astronaut riding a unicorn in the desert. Again, quite a tricky prompt. There's a lot of elements involved. It has probably never seen this in its training data. So let's see if it can generate this well. Again, I'm going to set the negative prompt the same and then click generate. And here is what we got. Again, not too impressive. I mean, the astronaut looks very realistic. The American flag on his arm looks realistic as well. The unicorn looks great. However, you know, the main problem is the unicorn isn't really walking. It's just kind of floating. You don't see any stepping motions from the unicorn. So again, this kind of looks like the AI video technology we've had from last year. It doesn't seem to be able to handle higher action movements. And then for your reference, here is also the generations from Minimax and Kling. And you can see both of them can actually get the unicorn to walk. And I don't know, it just seems like the movements are a lot more fluid and higher action for Minimax and Kling. All right, next prompt, this is even trickier. A group of Pomeranian puppies learning to become chefs. This is tricky because it's not just one puppy, but a group of puppies, and it's not just any dog, it has to be a Pomeranian, plus they're learning to become chefs. It's probably never seen this in its training data. Let's see what it can come up with. And here's what we got. This is actually not bad. These Pomeranians are all wearing chef hats and they're all looking around curiously. These are really cute, by the way. They do look like Pomeranians and, you know, they are learning to become chefs, although they're just standing there and not doing anything. I would like to see them actually cook or move some food around, but overall, it's still not bad. And for your comparison, here is the same prompt, but with Minimax and with Kling. And Again, you can see Minimax and Kling, they have higher action. These puppies are actively working with the food and learning to become chefs, whereas for Pika, they're just standing there and being cute. But overall, I mean, 
Pika's generation is not bad for this example. Let me know in the comments what you think. Let's now see if we can do this Disney Pixar style. So the prompt is a princess wearing a beautiful glittery white dress running away from a massive dragon with glowing red eyes. Disney Pixar animation style. And then for the negative prompt, I'm going to remove all of these animation keywords because that's actually what we want to include. So let me click generate. And here is what we got. So first of all, the princess is kind of wearing a glittery white dress. So I'll give it some points for that. There is a massive dragon with red eyes. The eyes aren't really glowing. And then she's not running away. She's standing still. Plus it doesn't seem like she has feet and she doesn't really have a face, which is even scarier than the dragon. And like I said, she's just standing still. She's not running away. So zero points for that. I mean, the dragon is kind of Disney Pixar style, but the princess, we can't really see her face. Not too great of a generation. And for your reference, here's the same prompt, but with Minimax and Kling. And you can see Minimax handles this Disney Pixar style very well. For Kling, not so well. And for both of them, the princess is not running away from the dragon. And so I actually have not encountered a video generator that can actually get this prompt 100% correct. None of the princesses actually run away from the dragon. All right, here's another one. The text subscribed to my channel made a vibrant, colorful smoke. And then here again, let me add the keywords cartoon animation 2D low quality. So here I'm testing its ability to generate text in the video. Let's click generate. All right, here's what I got. Well, it kind of pulled it off. I mean, subscribe to my channel is the correct text, but in my prompt, I specified for this text to be made of vibrant, colorful smoke. So it's not really made of the smoke. It's just overlaying text on this vibrant smoke. And then here's the same prompt, but with Minimax, and cling. So you can see actually all three of them have some flaws. None of them are perfect, but let me know in the comments which one you prefer. It seems like Pika is kind of the laziest here in that it's just overlaying text on the video. It's not actually integrating the text with the smoke. All right, next prompt. Now I'm testing if it can generate anime style. And this is actually something that Pika does very well. So the prompt is a girl wearing a kimono walking in the streets of Kyoto, anime style. And then for the negative prompt, I'm going to get rid of these 2D keywords because that's actually what we want. All right, let's click generate. And here is what we got. You can see it actually nailed the face of this anime girl. This looks exactly like anime. She is wearing a kimono. However, her walking is really strange. It looks like she's walking sideways like a crab or she's either floating along the street. In any case, the motion looks very abnormal. So that's a clear flaw here. But in terms of actually generating anime style videos and characters, Pika does quite well, as you can see here. And then here is the same prompt with Minimax and Kling. So in this example, I think Kling actually did the best here. Minimax, for some reason, was unable to get this anime style that I was going for. And then Pika, it's actually good at generating anime characters, but the motion is just weird. All right, let's try even harder prompts. So here the prompt is a woman who is very sad and distressed. Her eyes are red and teary. Her facial expression conveys sadness and emotional pain. For the negative prompt, let me add in cartoon animation 2D. So I want this to be as realistic as possible. Let's click generate. And here's what we got. This is not bad, actually. She does look, oh my god, never mind. <laughs> Did you see the eyes at the end there? That is creepy as hell, man. That's gonna be nightmare feel for me tonight. Anyways, she does kind of look sad and distressed. Her eyes are kind of red and teary, but she doesn't really convey enough sadness and emotional pain. And what I mean by that is here are the generations from Minimax and Kling, and you can see both of them just look a hell of a lot sadder. I mean, you can clearly see the intensity of the woman's emotions in both Minimax and Kling's generations, but for Pika, she doesn't really look sad enough. 
All right, next one is even trickier. Point of view shot of a soldier running through a war-torn city, rifle in hand. The camera moves quickly as explosions occur nearby, throwing up debris. The view dips and swings as the soldier takes cover and fires back at the enemies. Let's click generate. So this is a really hard prompt. Let's see if it can pull this off. And compared to Pico version one, this is not bad, all right? Version one can only do simple zooming and panning. It can't even get people to run. Here, it's at least getting the soldier to run. It is kind of a point of view shot. However, you know, some people are not running normally. You can see this dude on the right here. I don't know what he's doing. And then it's not really a high action scene. It's not throwing up debris. The view should dip and swing. The soldier should take cover and fire back at the enemies. I'm not seeing any of this here. In comparison, here's the generation from Minimax and Kling, and you can see both of them just handle high action scenes much better. I mean, you can see from this example, Pika is clearly still a step behind. All right, next one is even more challenging. Horror film, a swarm of zombies attacking people at a metro station, shaky camera. Let's click generate and see what we get. All right, and I'm actually very impressed by this generation. I mean, at least Pika version one cannot pull this off, but here we do have a swarm of zombies. They all have long hair for some reason. You can see some flaws like over here, their bodies kind of warp in shape and it's not really consistent. And then there's this dude here who is also warping over time. I mean, everything is still not very consistent. If you look closely, there's a lot of warping and deformations going on. So not a particularly good great generation. Now here's the same prompt with Minimax and Kling. And you can see for Kling, it's amazing. Kling was able to generate a shaky camera, which I specified in the prompt. And this looks very much like a horror film with zombies attacking people. Now for all three of them, there are inconsistencies. The zombies warp in shape over time. And so none of them are perfect. And that is because this is a particularly hard prompt. Whenever you generate multiple characters or multiple objects in a video, that's where you start to see more hallucinations and errors. But anyways, those are the three videos side by side. Let me know in the comments which one you prefer. All right, next one. A massive evil panda looming across the city, destroying buildings. Terrified people run away in all directions. High action. Let's click generate. And here's what I got. The panda actually looks very nice. This does look like an evil panda. It is destroying the city kind of. There's some weird things going on over here, but overall this is actually quite an impressive generation. And then here are the two generations from Minimax and Kling. Again, in terms of high action, I think Kling nails it. But you know, this generation from Pika is actually not bad. Okay, so that sums up my video on Minimax's new image to video feature, as well as Pika 1.5. As you can see for Pika 1.5, it's not great. It's still a step behind Kling and Minimax and Runway Gen 3. And then their Pika effects feature is kind of cool, but like I said, this seems to be just a fun thing that I would play with for one or two days, but then after that, I wouldn't really touch it again. I don't see any real use case for this. Anyways, let me know in the comments below what you think. As always, I will be on the lookout for the top AI news and tools to share with you. So if you enjoyed this video, remember to like, share, subscribe, and stay tuned for more content. Also, there's just so much happening in the world of AI every week, I can't possibly cover everything on my YouTube channel. So to really stay up to date with all that's going on in AI, be sure to subscribe to my free weekly newsletter. The link to that will be in the description below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.